Hi there. Welcome to this in-depth video of the risk management of obesity in children. This video will learn you everything you need to know. Promoting factors of obesity, protecting factors of obesity, and how to do a proper risk management. So let's get into it. Obesity is an increasing problem which has a negative effect on the health. Um, it's measured by the body mass index, the BMI, and I put a figure of that right here. A child is overweight or a person is overweight when its BMI is from 25 to 30 and it has obesity from 30 to 40 and even morbid obesity above 40. BMI is kilograms of a person divided by the length times the length. That's the formula. In the whole of the world, more than 600 million people um, have obesity, which is 12% of all adults, and more than 100 million children are obese as well. And this problem is increasing every day. While you are obese, you have an increased risk of cardiovascular diseases, type 2 diabetes, um, obstructive sleep apnea, cancers, osteoarthritis, depression, and many more diseases. Obesity is caused by excessive food intake, a lack of physical activity, uh, genetic susceptibilities, endocrine disorders, certain medications you can take, and mental problems like a depression. Today, the most smart thing to do as the world is to use prevention. And we can do this by social changes and personal choices, where we promote diet and exercise. And there are some obesity promoting factors. Your cultural background is really important, but also your personal factors. Like, do you have HDID? Are you being bullied? All is important as a child. Do you have sleep deprivation? Do you take medication? Corticosteroids or antiepileptics can increase the appetite of a child, and which may lead to obesity. What are the self-reliant or health skills of this child? Is it able to say no to certain types of unhealthy food? What is it? its genetic predisposition. Was there obesity of the mother during gravity? Is there a dismaturity or macrosomia at birth? Is there rapid weight gain in the first life years? Is there early adolescent development? How is it psychomotor development? And um, is it born in low social economic status? It's all important. And there are also some obesity protective factors, like did the child have breastfeeding? Is it from a family without genetic predisposition for obesity? Uh, does it have a healthy lifestyle? So does it eat vegetables, uh, not only unhealthy food, and does it exercise enough? And is there a good attachment between the parent and the child? Then, if a child is obese, you should do a proper risk assessment. And you should uh, look to the following comorbidities. The glucose tolerance, uh, dyslipidemia, hypertension, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, obsessive, uh, obstructive sleep apnea, and vitamin D deficiency. First of all, the glucose intolerance. You should look to this if, if the child is overweight and has two or more risk factors or when it's obese. The risk factors are type 2 diabetes in the family, non-Western uh, ethnicity symptoms like acanthosis nigrans, hypertension, dyslipidemia, polykystis ovarium syndrome or hirsutism and a maternal medical history of diabetes or diabetes during the pregnancies. When this is the case, you should uh, test the fasting plasma glucose and the insulin every three years when the child is older than 10 and when it's younger than 10, you only screen if there is a clinical indication. So a child has pre-diabetes when the fasting glucose is 5.6 to 6.9 uh, millimoles per liter and when the oral glucose tolerance is more than 7.8 millimoles per liter. There is type 2 diabetes when the child has symptoms like polyuria, polydyspepsia, and weight loss and a fasting glucose of more than 7 millimoles or an oral glucose tolerance test of more than 11.1 millimoles per liter. And then your treatment would be, uh, of course, lifestyle uh, interventions like more exercise, weight loss uh, and healthy food. But if this is insufficient and you have type 2 diabetes, you should also start uh, metformin or insulin for the child. 
then you should uh, screen for dyslipidemia. You do this by a whole lip, lipid spectrum. You test the total cholesterol, HDL, LDL, and triglycerides. And when you have normal results, you repeat this every two to three years, as long as the child is still obese. And otherwise, when they are deviant, you do an annual check. If the LDL is more than 3.5 and there is familial hypercholesterolemia, you start lifestyle intervention. So again, uh, healthy food, good exercise, and these kind of things. But the start of um, statins is unsure. There hasn't been a lot of research in this field, and it's uncertain if there is enough effectiveness and long-term safety under this group of children. So we should be hesitant starting in statin. If the LDL is, however, higher than 5.0, then you should start lifestyle interventions and statins because it's proven that it helps. Regarding hypertension, we are speaking of hypertension when the blood pressure is above the 95th percentile three times or when there is done a 24-hour blood pressure uh, and it's above the 95th percentile. Uh, the 24-hour blood pressure test is more uh, precise, so this one is recommended. If this is the case, we again start the lifestyle interventions and we could start an anti-hypertension drugs uh, and an ACE inhibitor would be the drug of first choice. Then we screen for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. We do this by determining the ALT, the alanine transaminase, and when this is too high, you do an ultrasound. And you follow this up. Um, if the hepatic enzymes are not correct or when the ALT is more than 40 or when there are ultrasound abnormalities which are there for more than 6 to 12 months. Uh, when this is the case, any of these things, you need to do additional diagnostics and your follow-up, like maybe a CT tests or um, more blood tests to see what is the cause of these abnormalities. Then we screen for obstructive sleep apnea syndrome. Uh, we do this mostly by anamnesis, so is this child sleeping well, does it have apneas, is it snoring, these are important questions and if the answer is deviating we could do a polysomnographia. Um, you also do this in grade 2 obesity when the BMI is more than 35 and there is a uh, deviant anamnesis or you always do it when the BMI is more than 40. The treatment in this case is again um, weight loss because when the sufficient weight is lost the obstructive sleep apnea will go away. However, if this effect is insufficient, you can always do an adena tonsillectomia. And the second option would be a nocturnal CPAP. For adults, this is often the first choice, but for children, this is the second choice because they don't really like the whole CPAP <laughs> going on. Then check if there is a vitamin D deficiency, and we are speaking from a vitamin D deficiency when there is less than 50 nanomol vitamin D per liter. Your treatment is three months vitamin D, one times a day, 3,000 to 10,000 units. And after those three months, you take a maintenance dose, once a day, four to 800 units. Then my last slide is a flow chart to exclude any pathology when dealing with a child with obesity. So a child has obesity, you take your anamnesis, your physical exam, and you look at the growth curve, and are there any signs for underlying disease then? You look at the medication, is the child taking corticosteroids, antiepileptics, or antipsychotics, or a insulin? Then you evaluate the medication, then you look at the dose. Could this be the cause of the obesity? Then you adapt it. Then you look at the length. Uh, is the child too small, or is there a deviate in the length growth? Then you should evaluate the endocrine functions of the child. If the obesity is from really early onset, so within the first years, or the first year, um, is the obesity very extreme and if there is hyperphagia then you should do a genetic evaluation and if there are developmental delays yes then exclude maybe a syndrome in the child if there aren't look for monogenetic obesity when the obesity is combined with brain damage is there maybe a brain tumor or a brain operation so cerebral infarct or bleedings or western meningitis in this case look for a, a hypothalamic obesity and lastly, when you have no signs for any pathology, then you just do your screening, uh, we discussed before, and you don't have to look for further pathologies.
So this was my in-depth overview on the risk management and obesity in children. I hope you learned a lot. If you have any questions, ask them in the comment section below. And if you're uh, wanting to see more of my videos, please subscribe. And see you next time.